and welcome to this screencast by Storage Switzerland. Today's topic is cloud storage infrastructures. I'm George Crump, your host for the presentation. I'm the lead analyst and chief steward at Storage Switzerland. Since this is a recorded screencast, we won't be able to take your questions live today. So please, if you do have a question, send an email to info at storage-switzerland.com. And then for any additional information, please visit our website at www storage-switzerland.com. So today's agenda is on cloud storage infrastructures. First we'll give a little background on who we are and what we do at Storage Switzerland. And then we'll talk about the different uh, aspects of cloud storage infrastructures. What, what, it, what is cloud storage? What are the uses of it? What are the types of it? What infrastructure types are out there? And what should you yourself be looking for as you start to consider a cloud storage offering? So first of all, who is Storage Switzerland? We're an analyst firm focused on the storage, virtualization, and cloud computing marketplaces. We have knowledge derived from over 25 years of experience. Our, our team all has a minimum of that time in the market, either uh, directly working in IT data centers, or working for integrators, or uh, as uh, working for suppliers and manufacturers. Uh, we also spend a lot of time with you, the end user, going over your needs and challenges, infrastructures, and understanding exactly what you're after. And then, of course, we spend a lot of time with suppliers understanding their products and how they might solve some of those problems. And again, please visit our website for more information, www.storage-switzerland.com. So on today's topic, cloud storage infrastructures. First of all, what is cloud storage? Well, it's an architecture that's either delivered as a service or is internal to an organization that typically allows multiple nodes of storage to be connected together to present a single namespace to the user. I sometimes like to call it a digital dumping ground that is scalable, reliable, and can hold key digital assets. So maybe it's a little bit more than a dumping ground. So for what are some of the uses then of cloud storage? Well, the primary uses that we see today is backup. A lot of times this is consumer backup of laptops and, and home computers and, and things of that nature. But we're also seeing this expand rapidly into the corporate IT infrastructure so that those same endpoints can be protected, be they laptops or remote desktops or things of that nature. We expect that use case to continue to expand uh, and grow. Uh, in fact, we think that there are some software applications, backup software applications, that are actually adding a archive or uh, replicate to a cloud type of functionality into their applications. The second use case is file sharing. Uh, we expect this to continue uh, in two ways. First of all, as a straight file server uh, type of application where you just basically have a file server in the sky. And then secondly, uh, as a actually sharing the application and storing the application storage. So there are uh, companies like Expresso and Google Docs that today uh, allow you to share and collaborate on an application but then of course they also store that data locally. The third type is data synchronization. Uh, there, there's a lot of synchronization, uh, wireless synchronization that leverages the internet and some form of centralized storage to be able to uh, keep things up to date on all the different devices. As a personal example, I use an application that uses the cloud to synchronize data between my mobile phone, which is an iPhone, my desktop, and my laptop, so that my to-do list is always in sync no matter what device I'm looking at. We also expect that use case to expand rapidly. The, third, the fourth type is media distribution. Uh, if you create a, a movie, like the screencast, or a full production effort, the ability to disperse that information around the country and have it accessed by the, uh, the, by the closest available node uh, also makes a lot of sense. And so storing that data, if you will, up in the cloud is, is a very useful case. You prob more than likely are watching the screencast from one of two points. Both of those are cloud storage services that Storage Switzerland actually uses to be able to deliver this type of media. And then finally, data archiving. We think that this long term will probably be the single biggest use of cloud storage. And it's to get data off of 
primary storage that's no longer being accessed and store it somewhere that is less expensive and requires less power and overall management. Uh, we think that uh, cloud storage really is ideal for this type of application because performance is less of an issue and to some extent constant access is less of an issue. So what are some of the types of cloud storage? You'll typically hear two types mentioned uh, an awful lot in conversations, public and private, and those generally are the most common types. Uh, a, po a public cloud is typically provided by some sort of service provider. There's a very low upfront cost. You, you don't have to go out and buy all the storage immediately. All you have to do is start signing up for some sort of a monthly subscription. Uh, you'll also see, uh, we've seen some where you pay $1,500 for five gigs and it's yours for life. And there are other use cases uh, like iForum that actually uh, charges you almost on a per file basis and it's for the life of that file. So that way you don't have to keep having to remember to renew your monthly contract or, or something of that nature. Uh, and, and again, by its name, it's public, so it's public, so it's accessible anywhere there's an internet connection. Uh, this can be a good thing and a bad thing, and the bad thing, of course, is that it is accessible from anywhere, and, and there's some concerns about security and, and things of that nature. Uh, that has led to the discussion of what we now call private clouds, which is using the same type of architecture that we described earlier, but using an internal implementation of that. This is especially ideal for very large organizations that have enough data that they could actually justify their own internal cloud. Uh, there's the, clearly you have a higher upfront cost because you have to acquire the software and the hardware, but long-term costs should be more manageable because you can control those costs ongoing as opposed to continuing to pay the same monthly fee. And then finally, the, probably the big comfort is it's only accessible from behind your firewalls or through your VPN connections. So you know it's secure and safe. Uh, the challenge is, of course, that you own it and it, it, it is at the mercy of your security and your operational procedures and things of that nature. So then what are the different types of infrastructures that are available uh, in the cloud? We, take, we break it down into three categories. Uh, the first is proprietary solutions provided by public providers. This is typically a turnkey service and, developed, and they've developed everything internally, the hardware and the software, uh, and they have a complete uh, solution. Amazon, uh, Nervonix, and companies like that are ideal examples of that. And then there's a, a growing group of what we call cloud-specific suppliers. These are uh, stored software or stored software and hardware manufacturers that are providing a infrastructure that a separate service provider would go, go to acquire so that then they could offer cloud storage to their customers. Uh, the two use cases are a, a complete turnkey hardware software solution. Uh, good examples would be EMC with their new Atmos product and then also uh, CleverSafe uh, is a good example of that as well. And then, uh, and also, uh, Bycast would be a good example. And then, in the software-only uh, standpoint, uh, say a company like Periscale would be a good example where you take their software and use your own hardware. And each have their different pros and cons that are things that you should consider. And then finally, there's the tra what I call traditional suppliers. The these are guys that aren't necessarily associated with cloud storage per se, but they have solutions that with some tweaking or, or just adjustment in your expectations might actually fit the bill quite well. Uh, they, these are, you'll typically see disk archive solutions uh, like uh, Permabit and Nexan and things like that. So especially if you're in the archive use case, it may not be hard to justify at least the examination of these type of uh, products as well.